Gary, thank you so much for taking some time. The Memphis Tigers are coming off a year in which they almost made the Sweet 16. They've, of course, uh, have quite a bit of a personnel change in the meantime. What do you think the expectations should be for Tigers basketball this season? Uh, for Penny Hardaway to make back-to-back NCAA tournament appearances. This team is not as talented as last season's team. It's not as heralded as last season's team. But when you bring back DeAndre Williams and add a player like Kendrick Davis, the reigning AAC player of the year, you know, that's a pretty good one-two punch. Is it the best in the country? Almost certainly not. But is it good enough to go to the NCAA tournament once again? Uh, yeah, uh, I think so. Gary, I want to ask you about shooting. Obviously, that two for 19 performance from deep against Christian Brothers last Sunday didn't inspire a lot of confidence here in Memphis. Do you have any concern about the roster and where the perimeter shooting is going to come from this year? Of, of course, it's a concern. Um, you don't have to be a college basketball analyst to to understand numbers. And the interesting thing about this roster that Penny has assembled is that it is at least the guys who are going to be relied on. It's almost entirely built of players who have already played at the Division One level, not all at Memphis, but but somewhere in this country. And they keep stats everywhere in this country. And so what we know is that uh, Elijah McCadden is a good college basketball player, not a good shooter. Keontae Kennedy is a good college basketball player, not a good shooter. You know, Alex Lumax is a good college basketball player, not a good shooter. And they've got a, a team full of guys who can be described that way. Kendrick Davis, excellent college basketball player. Pretty good, if not really good shooter. But he's probably one of the only starters and perhaps one of the only rotation players that you can even label a really good three-point shooter. The good news is that this is not the NBA. You can be a subpar three-point shooting team and still be a very good college basketball team. And unfortunately, I think that's what Memphis is probably going to have to be a very good college basketball team that struggles with shooting. So you got to make up with it, make up for it in different ways. You know, you, the defensive intensity has to be there consistently. You've got to be able to, uh, you know, get into the lane and, and finish around the rim. You've got to take care of the ball probably better than they have in recent years. But, you know, there are examples of teams that have been subpar three point shooting teams and very good at the collegiate level. So, it's a concern, the lack of shooting, but it's not a death now. Do you like Kendrick Davis and Alex Lomax in a lineup together? It's not what I would prefer on paper, <laughs> but I'm but I'm happy to 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 see it play out. Um, listen, there are no great options um, to play beside Kendrick Davis, especially after Emmanuel Acott, um, you know, uh, decommitted and 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 enrolled at, at Western Kentucky. I think you could reasonably assume he was going to hold that spot. Um, at the time that he was committed, but you know, that's all in the past now. And so there's some interesting options, but, but no perfect options. Uh, my concern with Kendrick and Alex playing together would be that suddenly in some cases, Kendrick Davis is, is not the primary ball handler anymore. And the thing that makes him so effective at the collegiate level, at least one of the things, and certainly one of the things that made him the American athletic conference player of the year last season is that, the ball was his. He was the lead guard nearly every possession he was on the court. When you pair him with another small point guard, um, I think he probably, by definition, has the ball a little less in his hands than than he otherwise would. Um, so I, I would prefer, again, on paper, in a perfect world, for Alex Lomax to be Kendrick Davis's backup as opposed to his sidekick. But as I've said many times over the years, I'm not in the gym every day with with these guys. The way that that coaching staff is, they they should and do have a better grasp for what works and what doesn't. And if they are leaning toward Kendrick Davis and Alex Lomax playing together a lot, that suggests to me that um, you know they they feel like that might be the best option out of a bunch of not perfect options. No surprises in the American men's basketball poll. Houston widely expected to win again. What do you make of this conference this season, and where do the Tigers stack up? I think Memphis is clearly, on paper, the second-best team in the league. And I mean clearly second-best in the sense that they're clearly ahead of the third and clearly behind the first. Ultimately, I, I think it's a two-bit league with a third team, probably either since Andrew Tulane, having a chance to get an automatic – or rather an at-large bid. The smart money says probably a two-bid league 
Houston, a one or a two seed. Memphis, a nine or a ten seed. And then everybody else fighting just to be relevant behind those two programs. Gary, thank you so much. My pleasure, bud.